Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Kevin Element of the Interactive Media Development Program at Confederation College. I'm doing a screencast here today to help out my first year motion and sound students uh, to get familiarized with Flash Professional CC for the first time. Um, we're going to be translating a flip book that we have produced uh, on, on, on post-it notes onto now the computer by using the drawing tools that are built into Flash. Uh, this is really meant to augment one of my classes, so for my other viewers, uh, you might find this to be a very basic introduction to Flash. It might help some to get into uh, the world of digital animation. Uh, I'm looking at the interface here of Flash Professional CC, and what I want to produce is a multi-frame animation done in the traditional hand-drawn style um, using the ActionScript 3.0 format. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click on AS3 and create a new file here just to see up on my stage uh, that I do indeed have uh, the white space to draw. Down here below on the timeline, and this is what I demonstrated in class that I would like to slowly go over uh, for everyone, I'm just going to zoom in here and talk a little bit about the timeline for a second and really try to familiarize ourselves with what this uh, strip of empty rectangles really means. On frame one here, we have a little circle, and if we look carefully inside that circle, we can see that there's uh, it's hollow at the moment. This is a visual cue in Flash to help us to realize that there isn't currently any artwork up here on this big white space called the stage. So when we see hollow circles on our different frames, uh, then we can we can be we can rest assured that there isn't uh, any artwork living on our stage. I'm just going to go ahead and use my brush tool. I would like my students to avoid using the pencil tool right now, but I'm going to use the brush tool. You'll find it on the collection of tools on the right hand side. I'm just going to press the B key. That's going to bring up my brush tool. It's really important to get to know our shortcuts. And I'm just going to start to draw a happy face. Something really simple. There we go. And now, when I look down here on frame one, I can see that that hollow circle is now filled in black, letting my eye know that indeed there's artwork living on my stage. Now for my students project, we're going to be needing a lot more frames to complete this traditional style of animation. And in order to be able to draw frame by frame animation, we need to have a lot of what are called keyframes to draw our artwork into. There's been some changes in Flash over the last couple of versions, so I just want to take a second to talk about two issues. One is how to select frames. Currently we only have one frame of artwork here on frame one. I'm just going to click and drag and let you see, I'm clicking with my left button, I'm holding it down as I drag my arrow to the right, that I can select a region of frames. And you can do this on multiple layers as well, but we're really just looking at a single layered animation today. Now when I right click inside of that orange region or that selected region, I can see there's a lot of new options. Like for example, there's insert frames, there's the old insert keyframes, insert blank keyframes. But I'm just going to get in the habit of doing what we call here this convert to blank keyframes here. I'm going to make this choice. I'm going to choose that and I'm going to see that now I've got all these little hollow circles that are empty and ready to receive my artwork. Now my students need to produce 90 frames of animation. So I'm just going to quickly scrub down the timeline and very carefully uh, scroll over till I can see all the way over here to frame 90. I'm going to click on frame 41 just to highlight one and look at another way to approach selecting multiple frames in Flash. I'm going to hold the shift key down now and click here at frame 90. The same way you would in your operating system if you want to select a whole lot of files for example. And now I'm going to right click look carefully at all these options and just remember that I do want to choose this one here convert to blank keyframes so I've done this in two separate sections of selection here across the timeline but you could do that all at once if you wanted to sort of scoot along holding shift scrub over hold shift scrub over hold shift and every time I say hold shift I'm, I'm holding shift and left clicking on that region to make a selection now I have a whole lot of different frames that I can start drawing and illustrating in, inside of. So on frame one, I'm going to scrub the timeline back with, the, with my playhead here. I'm going to drag that back to frame one where I have my first illustration. Now with the comma key and the period key, these are very important. The comma and period key is 
um, let us toggle between frames or move between frames in our timeline really uh, efficiently. So I'm pressing the period key to move my timeline one frame forward, pressing the comma key to move back one frame. So I can really move back and forth quickly and simulate what traditional animators would do if they were, uh, for example, flipping through an animated flipbook. Okay. But the frustrating bit is here I can't see the illustration that I'm producing up here on frame two. Well, Flash has got a great tool, and they've had this for a very long time in their environment. And it's a lesser known little button down here that's very important to, to us animators uh, to make sure that we can see the artwork in the previous frames and even the frames ahead of us so that we can really fine tune and address all of our, our different uh, illustrations. So I'm going to mouse over that and look carefully. The word here is onion skin and it's down here on our timelines so down at the very bottom here. And when I turn this on, I want you to pay attention up here where it says number one on our, on our timeline. I'm going to turn on onion skinning and you'll see a little region bar pop up. And this is telling me that I get to see all of the different art on all of these different keyframes between frame one and five. Let's see how this looks. Ah, isn't that wonderful? There's my illustration from the previous frame. Once again, I'm pressing the comma key to go backwards, period key to go forwards, and I'm in frame two where I can tell there's no art because that keyframe is hollow, but I'm yet I'm seeing the artwork from the previous frame, and that's this a feature called onion skinning. So now I can go ahead and just trace over my previous artwork. I know we could copy and paste the lines over and over again, and would make it really fast and we get a really um, crisp looking uh, animation where the outline around the face would never change. But I'm, I'm going to try a really loose animation style here and enjoy the benefit of this uh, line wiggling around as, as time goes on. So I'm going to continue to draw. I'm going to make my character go from having a smiley face to having a frowny face, something really easy. One thing I'd like to encourage everyone to do out there is just play around with Flash, have fun with it. Um, there's a lot of mythology out there right now that Flash is going to be going away because of Apple's case against it and battery life and all of these types of things. The truth is I think Flash is going through a renaissance right now and we're going to be seeing the tool being used a lot more to produce things like HTML5 games iOS games, casual games for the Android device, for example. Um, and as a traditional animation tool, it's still one of the best, absolute best tools in the industry. So I'm just going to, once again, press my comma key to go back and my period key to go forward, back and forth. And I'm scrubbing through the timeline just to see how my animation is coming to life. It's a little confusing right now because I can't really see. Um, clearly what's going on. So I'm just going to turn off onion skinning. That's this button down here just to reinforce that. Just to take a look. I'm going to turn off the onion skin tool so that I can only see the artwork on each frame. And now I can start to see my animation really coming to life. Awesome. Um, I hope this was a helpful tutorial. Um, if you need any support my students can always email me at the email address found on our uh, teaching learning management system called Blackboard. Thank you very much and have an awesome day. Happy animating!